Hey, well, good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming in this morning. I, I pray that you're having a great day so far. Why don't you go ahead and stand to our feet. We're going to worship the Lord. He is worthy of all praise. And we're going to confess today that there's no one like our God. Amen? Let's sing like there's no one like him today. Can y'all clap your hands this morning? Let's make a noise to the Lord this morning. Come on, y'all sing with Shannon as he leads us in worship this morning. Praises of man, I will never ever stand. For the kingdoms of this world, I'll never give my heart away. Shout my praise, my allegiance and devotion, my heart's desire and all emotion. Go to serve a man who died upon that.
like you do we sing our praise we don't sing our praise to a God who's dead but we sing to a God that loves us and gave himself for us amen sing you are my joy you are my joy you are my song yeah. you are the well the one I'm drawing from you are my the whole life long and where else could I go <laughs> sing surely my God surely my God is the strength of my soul your love defends me your love defends me and when I feel I'm all alone your love defends me your Day after day, day after day, night after night, I will remember you're with me in this fight. Although the battle, it rages on, the war is already won. We believe that today. I know the war. Surely my God, surely my God is the strength of my soul. Your love defends me, your love defends me. And when I feel I'm all alone, your love defends me, your love we Sing hallelujah to the Lord. And we sing hallelujah.
brought your heart to God as we sing this. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. lives around today. Sing that. Every voice, lift us up to the King. today Even when I don't see it, you're 
Thank y'all for participating with us this morning. Amen. Well, it's another Sunday, and it's good to see you here today. Um, if you're a guest, thanks for coming. And uh, after the service is over, if you'll stop by guest services right around the corner from uh, these two back doors back here, uh, we have a gift uh, packet that we'd like to give you and give you some information about the church and who we are and what our ministry is about, and uh, we just love to have the opportunity uh, to connect with you. Also, um, you know, people continue to, to ask, you know, how, how can we give during this season? Well, you can give different ways. Uh, there are baskets out in the lobby. You can give as you exit. You can go online. Uh, on the website, you can give. You can do direct deposit out of your account. You can mail it in, bring it in, send it by eagle. It doesn't matter. I mean, just uh, however you want to get it here is fine. And so uh, thank you for those of you that have been faithful in your giving. And um, just uh, know that these are some really, really uncertain times, aren't they? Um, actually, I, 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 had a, I had a different... I had a different message for today, and I called Daniel a little while ago, and I said, um, I'm going to change up something. And so, uh, so this is not written, okay? So, but uh, if you have your Bibles, turn to Psalms 23. Uh, Psalms 23, I think everybody uh, would agree that, that these are really uncertain times. You look at the culture, and... Uh, there is chaos and there is confusion, uh, whether it's uh, politically, whether it's um, socially, uh, culturally, uh, racially. I mean, there's, there's just this pressure. There's this stress on the culture, unlike anything that we've ever experienced in our life, right? Never been through anything like this. Uh, and even in the realm of the church, I mean, we've, I mean, look around. And uh, it's, it's a challenge. It's just a real challenge right now. Uh, people are afraid and uh, they don't know whether they should come back or, or not come back or whether they watch online or they don't watch online. But let me, let me just say this. I'm glad that you're in the room today, okay? I'm glad that you're in the room today. And, uh, you know, we need to assemble. We need to come back together. We need uh, to regather. And, you know, uh, this morning early I got up and, and uh, I was praying and um, I just went to the 23rd Psalm. And there's some things I wanted to pull out of there and, and just talk to you a few minutes about this morning. Um, and I want to talk about navigating uncertain times. I mean, how do we, how do we navigate this time that we're in? 
understanding we've never been here, nobody's ever been here. Uh, we, 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 in, in our lifetime, nothing like this has ever come around. Nothing's ever happened like this. I mean, you turn on the news, there's no good news on the news. It's all bad news on the news. I'll be so glad when this election is over, but I'm not sure that's going to be the end of it even, even when that happens. And so how do we navigate? How do we, how do we deal with the days that, that we're in? Well, David wrote the 23rd Psalm, and, and some things you need to understand is, is that David wrote this psalm while he was in seclusion. David was in hiding. Uh, David was hiding for fear of his life. Absalom, his son, had rebelled. He had taken over the kingdom. He had overthrown his father. And, and David is sitting in a cave now, and he's grief-stricken. Uh, this may have been the, the darkest hour of his life. And as he sits there, and, and I'm sure he was dealing with depression and, and, and anxiety and, and fear, and all of these different emotions are, are ro coursing through his system. He sits there in this cave, and he begins to write these words. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. These words give us some guidance in how we navigate uncertain times. Let me say this. You know Jesus as well as you want to know Jesus. I can't preach you into knowing Jesus better. You, we can't teach you into knowing Jesus better. You know Jesus as much as you want to know Jesus. You're as close to Him as you want to be uh, to Him. And you know, you really don't have to sing to sing. You just need a song to sing. And when you have a song to sing, you sing. And so David starts and he says, The Lord is my shepherd. You know what he's saying? He's saying, in spite of everything that's going on in my life, my son has rebelled. He's taken my kingdom. He's overthrown me. He's put a bounty on me. And he's trying to kill me, but the Lord is my shepherd. And that's the thing that I think that God would not have us to lose sight of during this season. In spite of everything that we're dealing with, in spite of all the bad news, in spite of the chaos and the confusion. I don't know about you, but I'm so tired of this virus. I'm so tired of having to wear a mask everywhere I go. Uh, I feel like I'm claustrophobic. I feel like somebody's strangling me, smothering me. I mean, I'm so tired of all of that. But in the midst of all that we're dealing with, don't lose sight of the fact that if you know Christ, you can say, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, not just yours, but He's mine. He's mine. And David says, he's my shepherd. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. There's something pleasing about that. Several years ago, I was, uh, well, it's been more than several years ago. It's been probably about 15 years ago. I went to New Mexico, and I went elk hunting. And uh, I shot this elk at 10,000 feet above sea level, a mile from the pickup truck. 
No roads to get to him. And so we had to bring him down piece by piece. Well, like we shot him at 7.30 that morning. And so we came down, and then we went back, and we came down, and we went back. And finally when we went back, I told the guys I was with, I said, listen, if I go down, I'm not going to be able to come back up. Uh, I wasn't used to the altitude. And so they said, I tell you what, you just stay right here. You stay right here. We'll go down, take this load back, and then we'll come back, and we'll get the last of it. I said, that's great. So they, they left me up. Y'all, it's the most beautiful place I've ever been. The aspen trees had turned. There was lush green grass everywhere. And in my mind, I went back to the 23rd Psalm where it says, He leads me beside the still waters. He leads me into green pastures. And I, and I put my backpack down there on the ground, and I just kind of stretched out on the ground and... I got to looking and thinking, and I started praying, and then all of a sudden a thought came into my mind. Uh, you don't have a gun. <laughs> There's bears and cougars up here. Well, all of a sudden my attention went from the beautiful green grass to this. But in spite of all that, you could just say, you know what? The Lord is my shepherd. He's my shepherd. And there's something pleasing about it. In the middle of all that we're dealing with, in the middle that we're all going through, I mean, people are shot through with depression and anxiety, and people are tired and weary, and they're overcome with the spirit of fear, and, and, and all of this is bottled up. It's like, it's like a pressure cooker looking for a place to explode. But the release valve is the Lord is my shepherd. But then he says, he restores my soul. You ever need your soul restored? The world will sap it out of you. People will sap it out of you. Circumstances in life will, will drain you. But he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. None of this caught God by surprise. It's not like last month, God woke up one day and said, Oh, there's a virus. Oh, they're going to shut everything down. Oh, people are going to get sick. People are going to die. Oh, I'm surprised by all of that. No, it didn't take God by surprise at all. God understood everything. God even saw the chaos and the confusion and, and everything that was coming. But in this, he, he guides us through it. The thing I want you to understand is this. If you read your Bible, what you see is that God had an uncanny way of guiding His people through turbulent times and situations. He didn't take them out. Think about Daniel in the lion's den. Think about David in front of Goliath. Think about, my favorite one, the three Hebrew boys thrown into the fire by Nebuchadnezzar, thinking that he had taken care of it, and he looks in there and he doesn't see three, but he sees four, and the fourth one is likened to the Son of God. God walked with them through this. And the thing I think we can draw out of this today is this. God hasn't left us. He hasn't forsaken us. That, 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 that He's with us through this. And we look around and we say, where's the end? What's the answer? What's, what's coming? I, I don't know, but He does. And He walks with us through that. And so there's providence. And he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you're with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. 
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the, what? Shadow. Not, not death, but the shadow. You ever been afraid of a shadow? Uh, you ever been in your room at night, and especially when we were kids and we were younger, and, you know, you're afraid of the shadow? My dad pastored a church outside Donaldsonville when I was a senior. And uh, we lived right across the street from the church in a, in a pastorium. And, and so one night my dad tells me, he said, on a Wednesday night, he said, Son, he said, I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you to go across the street. I want you uh, to turn all the lights out and to lock the church. Well, let me tell you, it was dark outside. And so I went to the church. And wouldn't you know, every light in the place was on. And so I had to make my way through the classrooms and everything, turning the lights off. I don't know what there is about churches at night, but it's boogery. I'm just telling you. I mean, you come up here. You ought to be up here at night some nights. Mabel slamming doors and... I'm, t I'm telling you, I'm telling you. You be up here at night in this building. You be the only one here. And so anyhow, I'm turning off the lights. Quickly. Turning off the lights. Locking the doors. And when I locked the front doors, I took off on a dead run to the house. Just as hard as I could go. Well, my two brothers had gotten in the ditch by the driveway. And they said they could hear me coming. Oh, that hurts so bad right there. <laughs> Y'all don't know. I think I, I think I got a rib broke last Friday night at a football game. But that's another story. Uh, but uh, they put me in for one play. No, I'm, I'm serious. Uh, but anyhow, I'm running. And about the time I hit the opening to the driveway, they stood up out of the ditch and went, what? They said my foot only hit the ground twice between the road and the house. Dad said, son, you're too old to be afraid of the dark. I said, Daddy, I'm not afraid of the dark. I'm afraid of what's in the dark. Right? David said, I walked through the valley of the shadow of death. My son's trying to kill me everything I have has been taken away from me but you're there there's protection in this now I want you to know that God sees us through these times and we really don't understand everything that's connected to them and God protects us it doesn't mean that we may not get sick it doesn't mean that we may not have some really tough days ahead it, it doesn't matter that God oversees that we abide under, under his shadow you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil my cup runs over Provision. David said, Where you guide, you provide. And God's provision is so evident throughout the scriptures. You can go all the way back and you look at the children of Israel. They left uh, Egypt, and as they made their way to the promised land, we saw the provision, the protection of God. God provided a way for them to escape the Egyptians, He provided them food to eat in the wilderness he provided them a route he provided them a plan he provided them a purpose God's provision and I want you to know that God provides during these during these times when things are uncertain when things are un, un, uneasy when things are unlevel when things seems to be coming unraveled that God provides 
Notice what he said. He says, you anoint my head with oil. The anointing was for the priest. The anointing was for the king. And the thing you've got to understand is this. David is saying, you have anointed me king. And because you have anointed me king, I know that your provision is going to be made in my life. And what I would say to you today is as a child of God, that God has anointed you into the family of God. You're an heir of God. You're a joint heir with Jesus Christ. And because of who you are, in God's eyes and in God's kingdom, that God provides for us. You say, well, what does He provide? He provides our needs. He provides our needs. Not always my wants, but He provides our needs. He's promised He would do that. But also, He provides us with opportunity. He provides us with opportunity. Do you know what people in our world are looking for today? They're looking for hope. Because if you watch the television, I don't care what network you watch, what you see with your eyes and what you hear with your ears is not much hope. Not much hope. When you hear the reports of people contracting the virus, People in quarantine, people in isolation, people in the hospital. We've had members of our own body in the hospital that have contracted the virus, that have been quarantined, and everything like that. And, and, and you hear about that, and we recoil at that, and we're just looking for hope. The hope for the world is not a vaccine, it's not the right personality in the White House. It's not the, the right legislation being handed down by Congress. The hope for the world is not the economy. The hope of the world is Jesus Christ. That is the hope of the world. And we have the opportunity now to share hope during these times. In the coming weeks, you're going to be hearing about come to the table. Several months ago, I began to think, you know, how, how, how do we regather? How do we come back? How do we get the family uh, of faith here back? And it's not an easy solution, but one of the things that we had talked about is, can we have a Thanksgiving celebration as a church family? And we thought, well, can we have it in one place? We said, well, we could, but we don't know where we would have it, to where we could spread everybody out enough. And so what we've begun to do is, as we've begun to, to think about gathering in smaller groups, throughout our area. Because, listen, in spite of everything that has happened this year, in spite of virus and racial tensions and social unrest and political chaos and confusion and upheaval, in spite of all of that, we still have an awful lot to be thankful for this year. What a great opportunity to regather our family. But even bigger than this, what a greater opportunity to invite your neighbors and say, hey, we're going to have a Thanksgiving celebration. And we'd like for you to come and join us. And we worked on some stuff, and I, and I just saw the first cut of it uh, last night, about 10 o'clock, and, and it's, pretty, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. But we need to be looking for ways of sharing hope now, sharing Jesus now during this time, because just now maybe, maybe people are more receptive now than they've ever been to, to spiritual things. And so God provides us our needs. He provides us opportunity. Then He says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's the destination. You want to know where we're going? That's where we're going. 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, I look forward to that day. None of this stuff will be there. No viruses, no divisions, no chaos, no confusion. Somebody asked me one time, said, Pastor, I, I know that God is God and I know that God can do whatever He wants, but you're talking about multitudes and multitudes and multitudes of people. Surely, surely. There's got to be challenges when you get multitudes and multitudes of people together. Somebody's not going to like the song we're singing in heaven. Somebody thinks we should sing longer. Somebody thinks we need to pray more. You know, why will there be none of that in heaven? Because of the awesomeness and the majesty of God. And when we get there, guess what? These personality conflicts, forget that. Man, look at Jesus. Our differing views on theological things that are not a test of fellowship, forget all of that. The focus is, look at Jesus, how awesome Jesus is, how majestic He is, how powerful, how awesome, how magnificent He is. And because of who He is, I fall on my face before Him, and I worship Him because He is worthy of my worship. Paradise. Paradise. And so how do we navigate? Listen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for He is with me. His rod and His staff, they comfort me. He prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. He anoints my head with oil and my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Because I I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Pray with me. Father, there's such uncertainty and such chaos and confusion in this world that we live in. And I pray today, O oh God, that we would find comfort during these days. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Is the Lord your shepherd? If you belong to Him and you're His, in spite of what happens, your comfort is in Him. Your hope is in Him. But if you don't know Him, you can't. We're going to stand and sing in just a moment, and when we do, if you want to know more about becoming a Christian, having all your sins forgiven, and being able to say the Lord is your shepherd, when we sing, would you stand up and just, as you turn to leave, go to the left back door back there, and we have some folks that will wait on you, and they're there to share with you, to pray with you, to encourage you, to talk with you. Maybe you need personal prayer. You can do the same. Or maybe you have questions about membership. Just get up.
Make your way to the back. Turn left. Slide out that door. And we're waiting on you. Now, Lord, today we're grateful for who you are and for what you do in our lives and what you make available to us. And so we pray that you will bless these days that we're in. And thank you, God, that you provide. You provide our needs. You provide opportunity. And so we pray in Jesus' name that you will comfort and bless and encourage us. For it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Let's stand together. We're going to sing. Let's sing to the one who hears us today. Lord, hear our cry. Come heal our land. Breathe life into these dry and thirsty souls. Lord, hear our prayer today. Lord, hear our Forgive our sins As we call on your name Will you make us this place Where your glory to dwell Open, Open the blind eyes Unlock the deaf ears Come to your peace
God, as we go from here, may we know that you are our shepherd, that you guide us, you direct us, God. You help us to walk by those beautiful streams and those fields, God. Help us to see that you are ultimately in control. God, we love you today. We, we worship you. And as we go from this place, may we be worshipers of you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Lee. Man, I, I ask him the story about the football game Friday night. It is painful to listen to. And he endured it. And I saw him yesterday. I said, you okay? And it's like he, was, he looked like the letter C. He was kind of bent over like this. So he standing up today straight was a, a, an ordeal for him. So um, give him a big old hug as you leave this place. But uh, just joking. Hey, uh, good to see you all today. As you leave, don't forget there's opportunities to, to pay your tithes or give your tithes there left and right as you leave. Um, be safe as we uh, as exit this place, and God bless you this week. Amen.